Hello everyone, I'm Nini FC and this is Blue Lines TV and today I'm bringing you guys a match preview of our upcoming FA Cup final against Manchester United tomorrow. But you guys, before I get straight in the video, this video is brought to you by BetBall. BetBall is an app where you can follow expert tipsters to try and boost your chances of winning the big bucks. But remember, you do need to be over 18 years old if you do want to use the app. And if you do use it, make sure you do bet responsibly. With myself, I only bet just to have a bit of fun. I'm not betting crazy amounts of money. I don't really care too much about my winnings. It's just about killing the time a bit, placing a few bets, and just betting within my means. And I feel the BetBall app is a great place to do this. I'm going to be placing some bets on the Chelsea vs Manchester United game and I'm going to show you guys just how easy it is. As you can see here, this is Blue Lines TV on the BetBall app, so make sure you follow me so you can see the types of bets I'm placing. And anyway, I'm going to be placing a bet for the Chelsea vs Manchester United game tomorrow. It's pretty simple. You click mark it over here. You can see the list of odds here, so I'm clicking on it right now. I'm going to be going for us to win the trophy, so as I'm pressing the odd here, of course, this is going to become part of my accumulator, and you can see the total odds popping up on the screen right now. Look at our match result as well. I'm going to scroll through to show you guys the amount of odds you can place bets on. I mean, it goes on, it goes on, and it goes on. So I'm going to be going for both teams to score over 2.5 goals. And I'm going to be going for another odds. I'm going to be going for Chelsea FC to win at least one half, which I think we will probably be doing based on our previous games against Jose Mourinho's Man United. So I'm clicking on that here. Yes, going for a yes. And I'm going to click on total odds. You click on this, you see the list of all of the odds you're placed if you're accumulated so over here. And it tells you your possible return depending on whether you place £5, £10, etc, etc. So yes, I got it. Then after that, all you have to do is place bet and then cross your fingers and hope that you win something. But anyway, you guys, as I said in the description below, it's going to be a link to the BetBall app, so make sure you download that and have a chance of trying to win something from the game tomorrow. We need to try and get a positive at least, so if you can get a positive from yourself from winning something from the game, regardless if we win or lose, you might as well go for it. But getting straight on with the match preview, and you guys, some excitement, I guess you can say, for being very cynical. <laughs> I'll be honest, I am looking forward to seeing Conte leaving after this game. It will be his last game in charge at Chelsea. Can he go out with a bang? Can he break that hoodoo of not winning cup competitions? He's in another final. Will he make the right decisions to help us get that trophy against Man United tomorrow? Let's hope that something happens. I mean, again, I have nothing against the guy. Just because I critique his footballing decisions doesn't mean I hate the guy. If he did win something for us, of course, I'd be very happy. And I think all of us as fans are hoping that Conte is going to make the right decisions for tomorrow. But anyway, Conte's press conference today. And again, this may be one thing I'm looking forward to never having to read again because Conte's press conferences have probably been the most boring press conferences I can remember from any Chelsea manager. I think not since probably Scolari have press conferences been so boring. And it's just like, oh, thank God that's going to be over afterwards. And with this press conference, it didn't really inspire much at all. I mean, it was really the same old, of course. He was saying things such as we should be fighting tomorrow. And, of course, he's talking about how Emerson won't be fit for the game tomorrow. He does have an injury, but at the same time, he was never going to play anyway. So, um, yeah, Conte's just saying that um, we hope we fight and uh, get something favourable tomorrow. And that he regrets not doing the double last season by losing to Arsenal. And let's pray that doesn't happen. But... What lineup can we expect to see tomorrow? And I think before we can discuss potential lineups, I think we've got to think about what formation we're going to use. Now, this has been something I've been contemplating about for a while now. I'm thinking, will we use a 3-5-2 tomorrow or will we use a 3-4-3? Now, there's benefits and there's negatives to both. Um, starting with 3-4-3, I do feel that this is the most logical system to use against Man United, obviously. You know, with how Willian and Hazard would be playing close to the striker, playing in the lines between Man United's defence and midfield, that's what you need. You want to have those guys in the half space. United will be using a um, a 4-3-3 against us tomorrow. And 
if we can have our wire players and our half spaces, that's going to stop their full backs from getting forward. And that's going to help us get our midfield into the game and help our wing backs get forward and create those 1v1s against United's full backs. And honestly, that first half performance in the game we lost against them a few months ago, we were very good in the first half. We were dominant. We could have got more goals. And you can see the positives with using this formation. Of course, we did. We didn't get the win due to you know individual uh, mistakes, but I felt we were the better team overall throughout that game. And I think with three four three, we are able to get that midfield control. We are able to get the wing backs forward. We are able to force United back more. And you know Hazard and Million are able to get joy in those half spaces as well. Now, in regards to using a 3-5-2 against Man United, the reason why I'm even thinking this is because we have been using it quite a lot since the end of the season. And, of course, Conte has been making comments about with the 3-5-2. He felt that if the team used it more often throughout the season, he feels that they would be in the Champions League right now. And um, he was basically saying that, well, because the players are not playing off the ball and playing defensively, this is why he wasn't able to use the formation. And in a way, it was kind of like a slight dig to the squad. But with a 3-5-2, Conte might be thinking, you know what? It's my final opportunity to win a trophy. He's thinking for himself personally, it's going to be great for his CV. It's going to boost his chances of getting top quality jobs. Because, of course, the more trophies you win, that's all teams and uh, you know owners really look for and care about. And Conte does want to break his personal hoodoo of not doing anything in knockout round football. And he will want that trophy as well. And, and this is why I think he could possibly use a 3-5-2 for tomorrow because he's thinking, you know what, I want to play as pragmatic as possible. I'm going to play the safe way. I don't care about the quality of performance. I want that trophy. And you know, the benefits of using a 3-5-2, of course, is that you know we could play that counter-attacking game against United. We could force United to come out against us and we could obviously try to exploit them on the counter-attack. Conte might be thinking, you know what, I want to combat United's three-man midfield with my own three-man midfield. You might be thinking, well, Bakayoko's performances haven't been as bad recently, and I'd like to see him continue in that role in midfield. I don't necessarily care too much about, um, you know, really leaving the spaces in behind because Conte might be thinking, well, we've lost to United because they've exploited us on the counter-attack. And most times when United score against us, it's always been on the counter-attack. And Conte's thinking, having three men in midfield gives me that balanced defensively that's going to prevent a lot of those counter-attacking opportunities and he's going to be thinking well United are only going to rely on their counter-attack once we stop that threat we can then cause them threats with our very own counter and this is the safest way to get that result against Jose Mourinho and to get the win but at the same time with 3-5-2 the issues can be one it's not going to be entertaining but then maybe that's just a bit of a trivial issue when it comes to trying to win a trophy. And other issues are the fact that we do get outmanned in offensive situations. The counter-attacks really do die down quite a lot. We aren't able to really sustain much pressure. And when we're forced back in our own half, we tend to just stay there because it's very hard for us to get out. Of course, there's that reliance on Eden Hazard. The issue with using a 3-5-2, giving Hazard the free roll, is that uh, Mourinho might decide to have Herrera or Matic do that one-man uh, marking job. And once Hazard's out when it comes to the counter-attacks, then really nothing's going to happen on the counter. And we're effectively just giving the ball to United for free. And I feel that it's too much of a big risk for me personally to use a 3-5-2 in this game because I think, you know, once Hazard's nullified and I can see Mourinho happily, uh, you know, really congesting that midfield to nullify Hazard getting the ball in any dangerous uh, areas and situations it's just not worth it in my personal opinion I think 3-4-3 is the formation to use in this game tomorrow we do know that with United and Mourinho especially in cup finals you see an even more pragmatic Jose Mourinho expect the team to sit back even deeper and really to keep their positions even more and still as I've been saying I feel that 3-4-3 is the best formation to use against United in the game tomorrow but in regards to what type of lineup you might see Conte using, well, I think there's a few players you might be seeing. I do expect Kale to continue playing in the middle of a back three. I kind of feel with Conte, even though I'm slightly disappointed, yes, Christensen has been, you know, he has made a few high profile errors, but at the same time, it's not as if there's been like multiple errors per game. It's been one unfortunate error. The guy is only 21 years old. He's not that older experience compared to how he is going to be in the future. It's a shame to have given up on him so easily. Um, 
uh, I don't know, I don't know. It doesn't really sit too well with me. Yes, Cahill has been decent. At the same time, let's get the context right. You know, he's playing against easier opposition where they weren't pressing our back three. And then Cahill didn't really get closed down quickly or forced to make any errors. In an alternate universe, Christensen's continuing those games and he's getting back to normal form and maybe he's playing in these types of games. But it looks like Conte is going for experience over anything. And this is why I personally feel that he could probably be using a 3-5-2 for the game tomorrow. So for this lineup, I'm predicting I see Kale playing. Of course, Alonso Moses on the right, Rudiger and Aspie in the defence. Now, goalkeepers hearing that Caballero is injured, so Courtois should be back in goal. In midfield, I'm expecting to see Bakayoko, Sesk and Kante. And up front, I'm expecting to see Hazard with maybe Giroud playing up front. I kind of feel that maybe Conte isn't necessarily as impressed with Morata. He had another slight dig on him, stating that, well, obviously, um, if we... Uh, uh, our striker scored more goals. We wouldn't be in the position we're in at this moment in time. So that's just ruffle a few feathers with some of the players. And um, yeah, I expect Giroud to be playing up front. Do I think it would work playing 3-5-2 in a counter-attacking uh, manner? I'm not quite too sure. I kind of feel you'd have to use Morata with him. But at the same time, all of our distribution is going to be a lot of long balls and a lot of direct balls to our front players. And Giroud's obviously better air really compared to Morata. So I can see why Conte will be looking to use Giroud in the game tomorrow. And yeah, you guys, this is how I'm seeing the game going for tomorrow. Now, my score prediction, a part of me feels we're gonna lose this game tomorrow. Right? You know, especially with Mourinho's track record and in terms of playing very pragmatically and really doing anything he possibly can to win. I still feel a part of me too thinks that Conte will try to spring a surprise for tomorrow. I think he might try to counter United by being very defensive himself and stopping their attacking threats and looking to hit them on the counter-attack. I feel this game tomorrow is going to come down to game management. You know, who gets the first goal is going to get a massive advantage because then you can kind of control and dictate the outcome of the game. Of course, there's possibilities that, you know, a referee could swing the game in any team's favour. You know, maybe a team can... Capitalise on a set piece, you know, that normally tends to happen as well. But again, it's hard, but I'm a Chelsea fan first. I'm hoping we're going to win this game tomorrow. We play very well against United, and most times we do outplay them. Over the past few games, Conte played against Mourinho. We have been the better team over United on multiple occasions. I'm going to go for a 2-1 win over Manchester United. I hope we get something positive from this season, if anything. I'm going to Wembley. The tickets cost so much money. Hopefully, I'm not wasting my time. But anyway, you guys, thank you for watching this match preview. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Nini FC. This is Blue Lions TV. Signing out.